Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I'm a bit too old to still get cash in my Christmas cards but I decided I wanted to treat myself to a piece of cheap tech to keep me occupied over the festive season while I waited for more old hardware to arrive and I somehow ended up with this, the Asus Tinkerboard. It costs £50 or $60 and I had no idea how to use it at first but what exactly is it? Well, it's Asus's more powerful answer to the Raspberry Pi, a single board computer that fits in the palm of your hand. It features a 1.8 GHz A17 Cortex quad-core processor, 2 GB of LPDDR3 RAM, 4K HDMI support, and uses a micro SD card as its hard drive. It's also powered by a micro USB connection. As for the operating system, you have two choices as provided by Asus. Android or Debian, which is a version of Linux. Now I'm not a huge fan of either, but I wanted to familiarise myself with other cheap hardware options out there that appeal to alternative markets, and this seemed like a good place to start. So let's talk about setting it up. That's pretty easy. I gave both operating systems a go today, starting with Android, which, after downloading from ASUS's website, can be mounted to an SD card using a program like Win32 Disk Imager. The SD card can then be inserted into the board. After doing that, I connected a wireless keyboard and mouse dongle, HDMI cable and micro USB power adapter. A phone charger with detachable USB cable probably won't be able to run this, so I used a hardwired 5 volt plug from my satnav charger which worked fine. After plugging the HDMI cable into my TV and plugging in the board, the system automatically fired up into Android which finalised a process that was a ton more simple than I thought it would be. The Tinkerboard also has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which made internet connectivity a breeze, and I also went ahead and paired my PS4 controller with it, which, as you'll see, comes in handy later on. First though, it was time to see what it was like using this thing. The Android interface seemed smooth and switching between applications worked flawlessly. A lot better than how tablets from within the same sort of price range handle it. Any lag you see on screen was down to the actual on-screen recording software. One thing I will point out is that the Google Play Store isn't included with the Tinkerboard's Android version, but can be downloaded separately elsewhere. The same goes for free apps. This initially caused an issue with the YouTube app, but after a bit of tinkering, I got it to work. As for web browsing and everyday usage, well, that's also pretty well handled by this tiny and completely silent PC, and Google Chrome runs like a dream, along with the desktop version of YouTube where even 4K playback is doable. One thing I had to try next was the gaming side of things. I started with an app that supports Bluetooth controllers called Only One, a retro looking game that ran perfectly at my TV's native res. EPSXE, a PlayStation 1 emulator, also ran brilliantly and I was able to play through some of my old PS1 classic game collection using this tiny PC with my DualShock 4 controller still connected. Using ASUS's Tinkerboard with Android is a decent experience, though you'd probably get a similar if not better experience just hooking up an Android tablet to a TV, which is probably a little more awkward but would mean that you wouldn't really need one of these. So what about using it with the operating system it was really designed for, Linux? Using the same method as before, I downloaded the Debian operating system from ASUS's website, copied it to the SD card and inserted the SD card into the Tinkerboard before plugging it back Back in. The board fired up to the desktop in a matter of seconds and the improvements were already noticeable. Linux can seem scary to a first time user and believe me it took me an hour or two before I figured out how to actually install the screen recording software or anything else but it's exciting because it reminds me of when I was a kid trying to use Windows 98 for the first time. Browsing the web is also an absolute delight and websites loaded in an instant. Don't get me wrong, I'm nowhere near ready to dump Windows for Linux just yet, but I'm excited to learn more about it and how everything within this operating system works. Despite all this, it seems that those of you looking for a budget piece of hardware with an alternative operating system would probably be drawn to something like the Raspberry Pi, which has a much wider range of support. I do have to say though that this thing would be ideal for a retro emulator system or a basic everyday browsing PC. 
The simplicity of the Android operating system combined with the surprising speed makes it ideal for beginners, two single board computers, who want something cheap that really takes up no space and is silent. And the support for Linux makes it perfect for alternative users or those of you who want to familiarise yourself with and learn about other options available out there. Either way, this isn't the last you'll hear about this tinkerboard as I'm looking forward to seeing what I can really do with this machine once I've figured out how to use it properly. Guys, thank you for watching. I know this video has been a little bit different and I haven't uploaded a video in about 715 days, but thank you for watching. If you liked it, leave a like on it. Dislike it if you didn't enjoy it. I think I messed that up. I haven't uploaded in so long I've forgotten how to talk. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.